Making the top stories this afternoon, Pam Party announces new candidate, update on missionaries kidnapped in Haiti, and Colin Powell, former U.S. Secretary of State, dies. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Monday, October 18. I am Mervan Thompson. Nationally, lawyer and East Bastia resident Natasha Shani Gray has been announced as the People's Action Movement's newest candidate for Constituency 1. She assumes the role from Ambassador to the UN, Ian Liburd. The announcement made by party leader Sean Richards came on Monday at the Royal St. Kitts Hotel in a, at a press conference. Richard said after fielding a number of applicants for the position in June, it was decided that Natasha Gray would be the next candidate. He added that he is proud of Gray's achievements, noting some of her accomplishments, which include becoming an attorney at law and her philanthropic, philanthropic efforts in the East Bastyr community with her book club for children. Gray is now the first woman selected to represent Constituency 1. On the heels of the donation of two field hospitals, the Federation is poised to further benefit from the U.S. Southern Command, or U.S. Southcom, with the construction of emergency operation centers and other, another Bureau of Standards facility. During the handing over ceremony last week of the field hospitals, National Disaster Coordinator Abdia Samuel made mention of the request for the emergency operation center shelters that are earmarked to be built in Sandy Point and Tabernacle. The EOCs will also be equipped with warehousing capabilities and, according to him, has been agreed to in principle by Cabinet to have the lands identified and approved for the project. Meanwhile, on Nevis, a proposal for a Bureau of Standards multipurpose lab has been submitted. It was initiated earlier this year to the Humanitarian Assistance Program of the U.S. Southcom and is awaiting consideration for the financial year 2022-2023. The St. Kitts and Nevis Bureau of Standards, SKNBS, is inviting the general public, especially businesses, to read and provide comments on, on the, draft bill of, the draft Bureau of Standards bill. It is significant as it sets the foundation for a National Quality Infrastructure, NQI, which will be used to guide the production of local goods and services based on agreed standards that follow international benchmarks. The standardization, accreditation, metrology, and conformity assessment, which includes testing, inspection, and certification of these goods, will be assessed. The bill will permit the inspection of establishments that sell goods and commodities in the country. Such inspections may include checking for labels, as well as testing of commodities to ensure they conform to certain regulations. The draft bill can be found by clicking Acts under the About Us tab on www.sknbs.org or persons can fill out the comment form directly under the draft bill. The deadline for receipt of comments is November 8, 2021. Comments can also be sent to sknbs at gov.kn or if persons have questions, they can call 467-1498. Regionally, U.S. officials are working with Haitian authorities to try to secure the release of 12 adults and 5 children with a U.S.-based missionary group. They were abducted over the weekend by a gang notorious for killings, kidnappings, and extortion. France 24's Ketavan Gorgestani tells us more. Well, the official information uh, that we've gotten about the situation came from the Ohio-based organization Christian Aid Ministries, which confirmed in a statement uh, that there were indeed 17 uh, people who had been uh, kidnapped, 16 Americans, one Canadian, and they broke down also uh, who those members were, five men, seven women, and as you mentioned, five children in that group uh, that was kidnapped. Uh, so far from U.S. officials, there's been very 
little uh, comment. The only official comment that we've gotten came uh, late on Saturday night from the State Department, who simply said that they were aware of the reports of the kidnapping, uh, but they didn't confirm uh, the uh, kidnapping itself, and they refused to give any more uh, details. Uh, same silence coming uh, from uh, the White House. It was actually the Haitian uh, uh, officials who said that they were actually in contact with officials from the State Department. But then there again, we have very little information as to how much involvement there is from uh, the U.S. side. Uh, very little also is known about the circumstances of uh, this kidnapping. There has been this report coming from the Washington Post uh, that got a message uh, from uh, one of the people uh, that was kidnapped, uh, a message sent to a WhatsApp a group in which that person says, we are being held hostage. They kidnapped our driver. Pray, pray, pray. We do not know where they are taking us. And that is also uh, one of the big unknowns of the situation is where exactly uh, those 17 North Americans have been taken, where they're being held, and whether there has been any ransom demands either from the Haitians or from the Americans. The chair of the Venezuelan opposition's negotiating team at talks with the government urged President Nicolas Maduro's administration to resume dialogue as soon as possible after the government suspended its participation this weekend. Reuters has more. Talks meant to resolve the crisis in Venezuela faced a new setback this weekend. Negotiations were put on ice by President Nicolas Maduro after one of his aides, Colombian businessman Alex Saab, was extradited to the U.S. Now opposition negotiators are urging Maduro's government to come back to the table. La profunda crisis humanitaria. The deep humanitarian crisis that is affecting our people, the millions of Venezuelans who have had to emigrate in search of a future that the country does not provide, as well as the non-existence of democratic institutions that follow the constitution, cannot wait any longer. Dozens of protesters called for Saab's release on Sunday, including his wife. Maduro's ally was extradited from Cape Verde on Saturday on corruption charges stemming from 2019. Saab had been under arrest in the African nation since last year. But just last month, Venezuela's government named him one of their negotiators in talks with the opposition. His inclusion in the team was widely seen by Maduro's critics as an attempt to delay Saab's extradition. Maduro on Sunday called it a kidnapping. They sought him out and they removed him with blows from the jail he was held. They took him without advising his lawyers or his family. Nobody. A kidnapping by the United States government of an international diplomat. The Norwegian-sponsored talks have so far not made any headway toward resolving long-standing divisions. But Norway on Twitter also urged Maduro's government to return to talks, saying it was the only solution. A majority of Venezuelans have been plunged into poverty, suffering gasoline shortages and frequent power blackouts. Millions have emigrated in search of work and better living conditions. And internationally, former U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell died Monday morning due to complications from COVID-19, his family announced. He was 84. We hear more in this Sky News report. A little bit of breaking news we could bring you. Um, this is coming uh, from the Facebook page of Colin Powell. Now, he is the former U.S. Secretary of State uh, and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Well, according to his Facebook page, he passed away this morning due to complications from COVID-19. Uh, the statement on his Facebook page says he was fully vaccinated. We want to thank the medical staff at Walter Reed National Medical Center for their care and treatment. We've lost a remarkable and loving husband, father, grandfather, and a great American, that from the Powell family. Uh, Colin Powell, uh, retired four-star general. Uh, he served as the 65th United States Secretary of State from 2001 to 2005. And he was, of course, the first African-American Secretary of State uh, before uh, the election of Barack Obama as president. Uh, Colin Powell and his successor, Condoleezza Rice, were the most highest-ranking African-Americans uh, in the history of the federal executive branch. 
Um, he also served as the uh, National Security Advisor for the States and as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, he had uh, retired recently um, and in his retirement he wrote his autobiography, uh, but he was still uh, carrying out uh, public uh, speaking uh, addresses uh, across the country and abroad and was also Chairman of America's Promise, which is a, a non-profit organisation uh, to try to help uh, mobilise people from um, every sector of American life to build their character and competence. So there will be many tributes undoubtedly coming him, into him in the current minutes and hours. But for now, all we have is the information from his Facebook page uh, that General Colin Powell, the former US Secretary of State and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has passed away due to complications from COVID-19. At least 19 people have been killed after heavy rains caused landslides and flooding in, the, in India's Kerala state. It is the worst flood since 2018 when more than 500 people were killed. Teams from the National Disaster Response Force are working to save those still in danger. Al Jazeera's Leah Harding reports now. Streets turned into rivers. Entire hillsides appearing to melt under heavy rain. The rain from the top has accumulated here. The water has entered our veranda in our house. It has been raining continuously since morning. Such heavy rainfall in the Indian state of Kerala was unexpected and has claimed several lives. Soldiers have been flown in to help with rescue efforts. This team is trying to reach others trapped beneath shifting mud, while this fruits and vegetables vendor does what little he can to save his business. At around 3.30 or 4 p.m. water started rising and most of our stuff was damaged. We managed to save some vegetables like onions, but most of our vegetables have been destroyed. The monsoon season ended in September, and after months of heavy storms, locals were not expecting another one, bringing such wet conditions. Farmers here rely on rains to produce crops, but too much creates problems like waterborne diseases. While the cleanup and rescue work goes on, the waters are slowly starting to recede. Leah Harding, Al Jazeera. And now for the weather. The temperature is 29 degrees Celsius or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Present weather is fair. Winds are a light breeze of 4 miles per hour from the north. Seas are not exceeding 1.2 meters or 4 feet. Weather forecast for today is partly sunny, then becoming increasingly cloudy with a 70% or a high chance of showers with a 20% chance of th sun thunderstorms. Tonight will be fair to partly cloudy with a 20% or a slight chance of showers. Sunset today will be at 5.47 p.m. and sunrise tomorrow at 6.05 a.m. That brings us to the end of the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for these stories and more in detail. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Amrevan Thompson. Have a great day.